And that's that we should talk a little about this. Ah, here we go. I mean, I say a little, we talk a uh, 50 minute courses worth. about percents and percentages. So this comes right from what we did yesterday when we were talking about proportional reasoning. Um, a percent is a proportion. Which is, and again, just a way of saying that it's a type of fraction. But a percent is a special kind of proportion where the bottom of the fraction is a hundred. And whatever number we have written up here gets written as that number followed by a percentage symbol. So 51 over 100 can be written as 51%. And the advantage of percents, or n advantage of percents, is that it allows you to very quickly compare different proportions. Like, let's say I gave tests, and the first test is out of 40 points, and the second test is out of 80 points, and the last test is out of 30 points. And all of these tests are weighted the same. And I look at a student, and on the first test, 35 out of 40. On the second test, 70 out of 40. On the last test, 25 out of 30. Yeah. It's very hard to, I think, to conceptualize these fractions for most people. And I include me in most people. I mean, first of all, let me drive home. We can think of this as a proportion. It's the points earned, colon, the points possible. So if you ask me to look at these tests, and first of all, determine the student's test grade, and second of all, without doing a bunch of math, tell you what um, letter grade I think this student is going to get, I would be bewildered. I mean, this student seems to be doing fine. You know, they're getting over 50% at least. You know, 70 out of 80 seems like it's probably pretty good. But is this an A student? Is this a B student? It's really hard to say. Yeah. And I mean, the point of having a sort of common, common denominator, not in the adding sense, but in the sense that it's common, that it gets used all over the place, having a common denominator that sort of everyone agrees to use really simplifies these questions. Because now, if everything's out of 100,
Well, a few things. I mean, first of all, it's easy for me to look at these percentages and compare them. Um, I can see that the student did fine on the first test, well on the sec on the third test, but kind of slipped on the second test. That's because to compare fractions when their denominators are the same is easy. If the numerator, if the top is bigger, it's better. 85 over 100, 85 is bigger than 72. So 85 over 100 is a larger fraction. Can't do that here um, because the denominators are not the same. Like, is 70 over 80 better or worse than 25 over 30? You can't just look at it and say. You'd have to do math. You'd have to, for example, get a common denominator, which is exactly what we're doing here. We're getting a common denominator to make these comparisons easy. And then there's kind of the social aspect of this. I mean, you might not think of math as being very social, but because everybody kind of agrees that we're going to use these special fractions with a hundred in the denominator, you can create conventions. Whether you're at Chadron or Oxford, and 85% is going to be a B grade. So, a um, percentage then. And again, this would be 85%. 72%, 91%. A percentage is a special kind of fraction, and there are things we'd like to be able to do with um, these special fractions. I mean, the rise of cell phone technology is rendering some of this kind of obsolete to, you know, do pen and paper, but kind of the classic example of this would be a tipping. So you go out to eat and you pay some bill, then pay an extra percent of the bill to The waiter, because of, I don't know what historical quirk caused things to work this way and why service industry people are just not just paid a normal wage like everyone else, but this is Timmy. And the number always seems to be going up. Like when I was a kid, you'd hear 15%. Now, the minimum you usually hear about is 20%. Occasionally, you see 18%, but 18 is a hard number to deal with, and it's not going to make much difference. So, what's it mean to pay a 20% tip? Well, to calculate X percent of something, it's done with multiplication. 
x over a hundred times the something. And again, this is because percents are fractions, and this is exactly how things work with fractions. If you want to know what a third of a number is, you multiply the number by a third. If you want to know what 20% of something is, you <laughs> multiply the thing by 20%. <laughs> but when you do this multiplication, It's necessary to turn the percent into a fraction. That is, I mean, probably no one in this room is likely to do this because you can sort of intuit that, that it's wrong. But when you're first learning this, the temptation is that if we want 20% of something, you just multiply by 20. And of course, that is not correct. It has to be turned into a fraction. Um, unfortunately, the whole point of percentages is that they're super easy to turn into fractions. You know, um, in the stuff that I'm sort of skipping at this point, turning decibels into fractions, that can be a whole big thing. But a percent, you just take the number and Pop it over a hundred. So if you have a seventeen dollar and fifty nine cent meal, and you want to tip. Exactly twenty percent. Now you turn that into a fraction. That's you. And then do the multiplication. I'm going to put parentheses around that just because the dot symbol for multiplication and the dot symbol for a decimal can make it confusing otherwise. And I mean, the nice thing, I guess, about 20% is that it's a fifth, and you can get it just by dividing by five and then rounding up. But if we wanted this exact value, should have started this calculator loading earlier. It always somehow takes longer than it seems like it should. Bear with me though. So 17.59 times, and you don't strictly need these parentheses because um, in PEMDAS division, yeah, you don't strictly need these parentheses because of the way multiplication works, but I always find it sort of comforting to put them in, and bearing in mind that you cannot hit um, eight one thousandths of a dollar, this would be three dollars and fifty two cents. Mm. So other than tipping, what's a context where you see percents a lot? Like sales. Sales. That's the other really big thing. And you see that something is 20% off, for example. Oops. 
So see like a laptop computer, 20% off. How does this work? Well, let's say we had, let's say we know the original price. And the original price, let's just say $1,200. So 20% off of $1,200 sadly does not mean in paying 20% of the price. That would be quite the sale. 20% off is very literal in the sense that you start with the original price and take off, remove, 20% of that price. Now, just as with the tip, um, if we multiply 20 by 1,200, we're going to get something bizarre. We'll find that, uh, that the sale is so good, it costs a negative amount of dollars. We need to remember that 20% is real the infraction, it's less than one, 20 over a hundred. Twelve hundred minus the uh, zooms doing its thing that it sometimes does. There's this input delay. Bless you. 1200 minus 20 over 100 times 1200. Clear this off and clutter it a little. 1200 minus, and again, I, I don't even know if you need these parentheses, but it always makes me feel better to have more rather than fewer. So I don't know if you'd find this easier, but maybe you would. Let me give you another way of thinking about this. An R percent sale is the same as paying a hundred minus our percent of the original price. So another way of saying that you buy a lot a lot up for 20% off is that you pay 100 minus 20 equals 80% of the asking price. 
So from that sort of point of view, to find the sale price, you take 1,200, you multiply it by 80 over 100, Let's see, here we are, 1,200, am I typing? Let's try that again, 1,200 times 80 over 100, same amount. I mean, it all amounts to the same thing. And in this world of technology, you know, it's really just the difference between a few button presses. I guess from one point of view, you could argue that this last thing is simpler because you can do 100 minus 20 in your head and then just tell your calculator to do this and it's typing the less. So let's go another way. I mean, we can keep with the laptop or the computer example. Um, so a friend of mine has been telling me that I need to get a Mac because I'm doing programming and he thinks programming is going to be easier on a Mac. I don't know if that's true, but let's say, he, I mean, he has a Mac. And let's say, I ask, well, how much was your Mac? I mean, how much money are we talking about here? And he says, well, I paid $1,500, but when I got it, It was on sale for 30% off. So we can now ask this question if the Mac is no longer on sale, how much will it cost? And this is a situation, one of these situations that shows up a lot in math, um, where setting this problem up is nine tenths of the battle. So what do we know? Well, we know that the map costs however much the map costs. And we know that my friend got it on sale. And for this problem, um, it's probably going to be easiest to think of a sale in these terms. He got it for 30% off. So he only paid 70% of 
of the regular price. So there's the original price, whatever that is. And he paid 70% of that price. And when he paid 70% of that price, well, he paid 1,500 bucks. So if we want to know what the original price is, we do some algebra. There are sort of two, two ways we could think about this. I mean, how do we solve for original price? And let's do again. How do we solve for original price in this equation? Do you, you do the original price and is it the 1,500 times like 0.7, which is the... Almost. Okay. So, the times is over here. We've got the original price times. As you say, 70% is 0 0.7 equals 1,500. And our goal is to get the original price by itself. So our goal is to somehow get rid of that 70%, that 0.7, using elementary algebra. So we're currently multiplying by a number, and we want to get rid of that multiplication. What do we do to get rid of multiplication if we're trying to solve an algebraic equation? Divide. Divide. There are other ways we could think of this. We could talk about, um, we could talk about multiplying by reciprocals or whatever. And we will talk about algebra later in the class. That's in the curriculum. So if there's a little creepy on this, that's fine. We'll we'll go over it in more depth down the down the line. But to undo multiplication, we divide both sides by whatever we're trying to get rid of. And, you know, 1,500 divided by 0.7, there's a line of thought that you shouldn't write something like this because you're mixing decimals and fractions. And then there's my line of thought, which says, who cares for about to do the division and it will all go away. So let's round to the nearest dollar, 2,143. Okay, so we've done the material on the homework. Um, most people, so 
I think we're sort of done with this section. I think a lot of people find the proportional reasoning stuff difficult. Did anybody want to ask any questions about that before I ask you to hand it in? I did. You have to read the okay. question to me. So the first question is like if the ratio of boys to girls in a class is two, three, or two to three, what is the ratio of boys to all the students in the class? So the question that I'm wondering is there's why on here. And so like I did the problem, but I don't know how to in words explain why. Okay, so you found two to five. And then it says why. Okay, and so. Is that just us doing the math? Or I mean, it's basically, I guess, you doing the math. But because what are you, what are you looking? Oh, let's see. You are looking for boys to students when there are when there are two boys there are three girls, and if there are two boys and three girls, so five students total. So the ratio of boys to students is two to five. Okay, that makes sense. And then also one more question. Yeah. Does anyone want to go first? Does anyone have a question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, on number 11, you're asking like two different problems in it. It's like the first question, it says, in the word Mississippi, what is the ratio of vowels to consonants? And I'm like, and then it goes on, at Rattlesnake School, the teacher-student ratio. So then it's asking teacher-student ratio. Uh -huh. So are you wanting us to solve the two problems? That's, yeah. Sounds, that sounds so like I, some I, kind of weird typo. Yeah, I like crossed off the first no, one. No, you are correct. Okay, cool. That is problems 11 to 12. Okay. Somehow, uh, sorry. That makes it fun. Okay, that totally makes sense because I was like, I, it looked like it was supposed to be two different. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. That was all my questions. <laughs> right. Okay, so 11 is Mississippi and 12. Yeah. Okay, I just put... I mean, if you answer them both, I don't care about how they're numbered. I numbered them one and two, but I can do yes, it. Yes, that is fine. Okay. It's not hard for me. Then why don't I get these to you and you can get that to me. I'll have a tree. <laughs> yeah. Let's Thank see. Did I get you? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to take my own cheese signature and use the first thing I've ever had to do. 